Alright guys, I have here the earth, alright, and then I will be putting here, imagine there is also a, a mass here, alright, an object here with mass M, and you know the earth mass is here, let's just put the uh, yeah, high pen there, just to represent that, uh, just to signify that these ones are actually having different uh, values. Now, uh, we already know that whenever you have a mass here, and it is a little bit closer to the earth, then this mass is going to experience a force directed towards the center of the earth like that all right and this one the force that uh, uh, being experienced by that object is actually equal to the mass whatever the object's mass is multiplied by a a constant or a value equal to the so-called g which in our discussions before we named this as gravitational field uh, strength uh, basically, sometimes uh, this one is also called the uh, acceleration due to gravity or the acceleration of free fall. Alright? But in the case of this one, because I'm, my, my idea is that uh, to introduce the electric field to you using the idea of gravitational field uh, strength. Okay? That's why I started this uh, with this drawing. Okay? So, G is the gravitational field strength. And uh, so far, whenever we use this, we use the value 9.81 Newton per kilogram. All right, the magnitude of the acceleration uh, due to gravity, or in our case here, the gravitational field uh, strength. Okay, if you have another mass here, okay, with a uh, with a certain value equal to, for example, this m. All right, it has an m. The force uh, being experienced by this mass m is equal to whatever the mass uh, of that object multiplied by the value of the g all right and this arrow here is representing that force here all right which is the product of these two uh, quantities all right now this g is also being used here all right, say we have another there, all right, and it is experiencing a force equal to the mass, all right, multiplied by the value of the G again, all right, and this is equal again to the force, the magnitude of this force, all right, okay, the gravitational uh, pull, uh, as you may want to call it like that, all right, okay, now, uh, actually, in this particular diagram here, uh, we are not very accurate because the the acceleration due to gravity is actually proportional to the reciprocal of the square of the distance from here all right to the center all right like that one from the center of the earth going to the center of the object all right it is actually varying the values for example this one 9.81 9 newton per kilogram this is only something applicable when you are measuring the uh, gravitational field strength or consequently the gravitational pull on objects at the surface of the earth all right uh, on the surface of the earth i mean around here if you move a little bit uh, away from the center of the earth then the g is going to decrease all right now that that idea is again uh, similar uh, something that we can use in the in the discussion of the so-called electric uh, field all right or electric field strength all right you just imagine we have here uh, a charged particle maybe uh, p plus all right and we have here a e minus all right uh, imagine there's a negative particle in there and what happens is actually this one is being being pulled here with some uh, amount of force all right now if you have another uh, charged particle here for example a neg uh, another negative it will also experience a force in this direction same with a for another one here all right uh, a negatively charged particle being pulled here all right in general you can just uh, imagine that the direction of uh, the force exerted to any other negative charged particles around this uh, positive uh, charged particle here is going to be this way all right it is always inward like that okay like that all right 
Okay, it's always in one. Okay, and this uh, drawing, these arrows here that I'm, uh, I am, I just drew these gray ones are actually called uh, field lines. All right, we, uh, which is also uh, similar to the arrows here. You can also call these field lines, but in this case, you may refer to this as gravitational field lines. All right. Now, in our case here, because we are not dealing with mass, all right, gravitation is about mass. This one is about uh, electricity or electric or it's electrostatic to be more specific. All right. We have here field lines representing uh, the lines of force. All right. In these particular fields. All right. Okay. The field lines are actually uh, something that can tell us uh, how strong the electric uh, field is around this uh, region or in any point in this region. Okay. We have here a field strength also similar in the gravity but this time instead of calling it gravitational uh, field strength we have uh, electric uh, field strength okay as for this part here the g is equal to force over the mass all right the gravitational field strength g is equal to the gravitational force divided by the mass now similarly we can follow that uh, format uh, having this one okay e which uh, we can say this is electric field all right or electric field strength is equal to the uh, force which is an electric force the force uh, between these two charges divided by the mass all right and these lines here just like what i was saying a while ago uh, these are called the uh, field uh, lines all right representing the lines of force okay the, the, the one that I showed you just now all right these field lines are actually very helpful to visually uh, see the direction of the force acting on a certain charge and at the same time the magnitude of the uh, charge itself all right now for the direction of the force obviously it's gonna be along the field lines however when it comes to the magnitude this is about the closeness of the field lines all right in our discussion a while ago here i tried to imply that the uh, gravitational field strength is going to be more or greater when it comes to value at uh, closer to the center of the earth all right the same is true with this electric field okay the closer this electron for example this is an electron to the proton then the greater magnitude the field line is or consequently the force also the electric force all right okay so here uh, we can see the closeness all right if you're going to draw the field lines around a particular uh, charged particle the closer the field lines that you can uh, draw the higher or the greater the electric field there or the stronger the electric field there all right the closer they are the stronger electric field all right now, I want you to uh, uh, forget about this for a while and then I will be going back here later. I just want to, because uh, it might be confusing if I'm, I will be discussing about the test charts, alright? Uh, I'll be going back later, but for now we look at the so-called test charge, alright? Test charge is like uh, something that they use for convention. What should we use as direction of field lines when it is a positively charged particle? Or a negatively charged particle for conven uh, convention uh, sake all right for like an internal agreement among physicists among uh, professors and teachers and uh, textbook uh, writers as well as students they have this kind of convention based on a test charge all right and a test charge is a positive uh, point charge all right all right let me explain more about it let's see we have a positive charged particle here what would be the convention when it comes to drawing of field lines all right drawing or sketching field lines around this now if we have another one here we have an electron uh, i mean negatively charged particle okay we are going to put a test charge and test charge is usually a positive charge all right this one positive charge the positive charge will tell us the direction of the field line in which direction test charge will be moving all right that is the direction of the field lines in this case it looks like it's going to be repelled by this uh, charge here our test charge is going to be repelled by our charge so at this point the field line should be like that all right now if you have another test charge around here 
the field line should be like that another test charge around test charge around here it should be like that same here same here and so on all right okay this is actually something very uh, similar to the old level i believe you still remember that uh, the uh, field lines coming from uh, if you're going to draw field lines from a positive charged particle is going to be outward like that all right however if you have a negative charged particle the field lines is going to be drawn differently because of the effect all right uh, where is this test chart going if this is the case okay so obviously from the idea about uh, the basic law of electrostatics all right uh, unlike the uh, charges attract each other so this is going to happen this positive uh, test charge here is going towards the negatively charged particle all right if you have another one here it will be going this way all right if you have another one here it will be going this way okay how about here of course going this way also and so on all right so similarly in the o level we have this also and this explains it basically it's a uh, for convention sake all right so we can uh, use the same uh, language in representing uh, the field lines that uh, we should draw around uh, different uh, charged particles for positive it's going to be outward uh, negative is going to be inward all right now this kind of arrangement is called the uh, radial and the one we have here are called uh, radial fields you can see the direction is uh, similar to this one if your charge around here is positive of course if your charge is negative it's going to be the opposite all right how strong the electric field is or how strong the force that the charge will be experiencing it depends on the closeness of the field lines the closer all right the stronger the field uh, the electric field now another thing that you should know about the uh, electric field is represented by this parallel plates and these plates are charged this one is say positive and the other one is say uh, negative you will see that if you have something like this some part of it you have this straight line like this or straight, uh, straight uh, field lines like that okay arranged like this like uh, parallel to each other okay and it will just be curving around here all right and around here also and this part this point here because if you're going to consider one area here it looks like the closeness of the field lines here and the closeness of the field lines around here or anywhere around here is going to be the same all right that's why we can say uh, when you have the two charged plates like this we can say that this portion is having uniform field all right since the field is uniform here if you have particle here let's say a positive uh, positively charged particle it will experience a uniform force also all right you have a uniform field you have a uniform force and therefore you can say that when this moves it will do you can you can observe a uniform acceleration as well all right going in this direction if you have a negative charge particle all right it's gonna be the other way it will be experiencing a uh, uniform force here all right or constant force leading to constant acceleration as well all right unlike in the radial fields all right like this one okay that's positive we have this one outward all right these are the field lines by convention the one that i explained just now if you have a positive charge here then of course it will be experienced forces however the forces are going to be experienced by these two uh, positive charge here is going to be different especially when it comes to the magnitude of course in here it's obviously it's going to be different direction this one is moving this way and this one should move that way all right depending on uh, the direction of the field lines that you can assume or you can draw somewhere here all right that's the direction of the force also and when it comes to the magnitude the magnitude of the force experienced by this charge is going to be let's say f and there's an acceleration equivalent to that all right and for this one because the there will be lesser uh, field lines around here all right as it goes away from from this all right uh, the one creating the field lines all right we can we can think of it like that uh, this one will be having a smaller force 
all right we will be experiencing a smaller force and therefore a smaller uh, value for the acceleration okay there is a, if, if if a charge goes from close uh, region to a very far region then the force they experience is going to be decreasing or uh, the acceleration here if you are interested to find the instantaneous acceleration around here because the acceleration is going to be changing depending on the distance of whatever the charge particle is from here all right so every time there's a difference in the distance then there is a change in the acceleration so what you can calculate here is kind of instantaneous acceleration now uh, you can still uh, use here of course you can use it as a law this is the newton second law the uh, law of acceleration here is equal to force divided by the mass and you know this m here should be whatever the mass of this uh, charged particle is all right and the f here is whatever the force experienced by that uh, charged particle which is based from our previous slide uh, after doing some uh, manipulation uh, we can have the electric force equal to the uh, charge multiplied by the electric field like this all right now sometimes people try to quantify electric field based on uh, this diagram here like a positive plate and then a negative plate here if they want to do if they want to determine the electric field what they can do is like uh, find the voltage or the potential difference of, uh, here if you are going to do this experiment most likely what will happen is that more uh, voltage that you can detect around here in that one is going to be proportional to the uh, electric field all right it's, uh, higher voltage detected is going to be um, uh, a stronger electric field in there all right another quantity of interest here is the separation of the plates okay this distance d here is the one representing the separation of the two charged plates here and uh, in an experiment the relationship that is expected to see is this one all right the electric field is directly proportional to the reciprocal of the distance the separation of the plates or equivalently you can also say that uh, electric field is inversely proportional to the separation of the plates now if you are going to combine this what you can have in the end is going to be this one it turns out that the proportionality constant here is uh, one in magnitude all right and there will be a negative sign here because usually in the experiments uh, they put a power source here the voltage being increased until that point where the value of the voltage in the power source can already stop the particle moving in this direction if it's a positive uh, so it's, uh, it looks like uh, the power source has to be connected the uh, the other way around like uh, plus here and minus here the other way around all right that's why there's a negative sign around here okay now this moves to some derivation this was defined a while ago in my previous slide and this one was where we got this one all right the force uh, experienced by these charges and these charges too all right it's equal to force is equal to charge multiplied by the electric field and electric field de therefore is force divided by the charge okay now uh, we have two equations for electric field here so we can just combine them all right all right so we will be having this one okay so basically what we have here i changed this uh, e to this negative v over d so that's why i have this and this is equal to the force so another formula that you have to remember if you have if you know these uh, values the q v and d and then you want to know the force acting on the charge then you can just plug those values in uh, this equation all right if you are trying to investigate an electron then the formula will be reduced to this one all right ev divided by d all right there's no negative sign anymore because uh, that's like what we learned before the charge of an electron is negative and the magnitude is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb which is also similar or the same in magnitude as compared to the proton all right it's just that the sign are different all right this is for electron all right another thing that you have to understand in this uh, content in your textbook is the the idea about the work done on the charge 
Okay, as you can see, uh, the mechanics uh, concepts, like for example, the Newton's law, the Newton's second law of motion, which is I already wrote here. We also have this definition of work, all right, or the formula for work, saying the force and the distance where the force to be considered must be along the direction where the object moves, all right. So they must be parallel to each other, all right. Like uh, for example, there are some questions. Uh, that uh, asks about the work done on this uh, positive charge here. You consider the force, all right? This uh, this force here, okay? And then you consider this distance, okay? This distance. They have to be parallel with each other. And this one is equal to the uh, work, the work done on this uh, positive charge particle here by the uniform field, all right? What if? charge is coming from outside for example and it has some initial uh, motion it will be moving this way you can calculate the work following the same thing all right you need again the the uh, force and the distance all right this is the force still going this way if the distance that you are going to consider is this one all right the component of this uh, length along the direction of the line of force all right uh, remember, when calculating work, the uh, direction of the force and the displacement of the particle must be the same. Okay, so it's like uh, even if this charge is brought somewhere here and then it goes here, it goes here, it goes here, it is only dependent on the initial and the final uh, uh, position. And apart from that, it has to be, uh, uh, the distance has to be like parallel with the direction of the line of force. Okay? If you have, uh, if you're going to move this charge here and then go here, the same work done on the charge as uh, when it was moved from here to here. All right, the force value and the distance uh, or the displacement parallel to the direction of the force is also the same. Okay. All right.